In this video, we're going to be looking at my favorite, which is Airtables. And I'm going to build in front of your very eyes a project management system. This is to help you think about how you manage your projects as a company, how you might be able to showcase information about your project as well to your clients. If you can build some sort of project management solution for yourselves that match your processes in a way that you feel you're going to use it, then I think this is going to be really, really powerful for you rather than trying to make something out there fit. Build it yourself. Watch this. Have some fun. If you make your own base, want to share it with us, please make sure you share it in the comments below and on with the show. All right, so let's take a look inside of Airtable and see what we can build to help us manage some projects. So the first thing we're going to want is the contact that we're dealing with. So let's make the contact table. Then we'll want to know what our project is, so our projects. And then within those projects, we're going to have deliverables. And let's add company. And I guess in any system, you may have uh, particular contact details as well. So let's say you want their email, and let's change that to email. And then we want a telephone. You get the idea. You can start to build this up. Now, this particularly might be useful if you want to email updates to people, etc. Let's pop in some fake data as well. And through the magic of editing, here we have the information. And so I can see this a bit clearer. I'm actually going to group this by company as well. So I can see Angle Crown has got these two contacts, and I can also see Event Engine. Now for my project, um, there's going to be some information that I want to capture on the project. Obviously, there's going to be a project name. Perhaps we'll leave the notes in there. Let's get rid of attachments. And um, I might be interested in the start or the end date or the date due etc so let's pop some of that in so let's just say date uh, due perhaps we're going to be tracking that at some point so let's put the date and then also we're going to want to link the relevant contacts as well so contacts and let's use a link to the contact and we're going to allow for multiple contacts as well uh, so for example that means that I would be able to pull up the two angled crown contacts uh, very quickly if I wanted to uh, let's set a date due for this particular project so let's just say it's due for November this would be where the notes would go and we'll call this uh, web build so here we have now uh, our contacts we have our web build project and some notes now, what would be useful as well, if we add another field in here, we could have the start date. And what we can do is essentially then report at a very uh, high level, let's say the senior project manager just wants to see what the overall progress is, or for someone who maybe is quoting on future projects and saying when they expect to be able to deliver things. If you've got start dates in here, um, then you'd be able to go ahead and actually create a Gantt chart. So let's do that quickly now by clicking on blocks. And this is something that's only available in the premium section. Um, and we'll click on Gantt chart, add to base. And we're going to select project. It's already automatically selected the start and the due date. And then here, this allows us essentially to uh, manage all of these. Dra we can uh, we can drag and drop the order of them, etc., so that we can see what the overall flow of these projects is going to be. So let's take a look, and then let's scroll across so we can see where these are. That's a really useful tool to be able to see where you may have overlap, etc. And this is just a very kind of high level quick glance to see where you might be at on particular projects and where overlap may be and where you may be able to kick off other projects. So next against any project we're going to have deliverables that's uh, the different sections that we're providing or the different elements of the project. So let's get rid of these two fields. Uh, we'll keep the name field as the description of our particular deliverable but we want to make sure that we can link this to the um, the project so that we're able to group then these to the project so let's link uh, a couple of these to the web build project and one to the app build project um, then what we'll do is we'll group this by project so that we can see this much clearer um, and then we can put in some deliverables so I'm just going to put in sprint one and sprint two Sprint 1, Sprint 2. All right, let's build up the data here. So we're going to have a start date. We're going to have an end date or due, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, we could have an owner as well, especially if this is um, something that you're going to be doing internally. So um, let's add a collaborator uh, and we can notify them when they're assigned something. So for example, I could assign this to me or to Larissa or to anyone in the team, etc. So let's assign all these as the project manager. Let's put in uh, just some example start dates. All right, so we've got this data in, and I'm going to add into a new dashboard area called Project Manager another Gantt chart, which is going to give me an overview of these deliverables so I can see where I am with the deliverables. So I see Sprint 1, Sprint 2, Sprint 1, and Sprint 2. And uh, we can also select different views. So you can actually create by mul uh, multiple views. You could create a view of each project and then have a specific Gantt chart for that project so that you can show that to the client. Um, I'm actually going to group these by the project so that I can actually see all of my projects on one screen, which is, again, super helpful. Now, what I can also do is create what's called a dependency. So I'm going to create a new field here. So let's insert left. There you go. So I will click there and I'm looking for the app project and I'm saying that this is dependent upon Sprint 1 happening. And then for here, Sprint 2 is dependent on Sprint 1 of the web build project happening. So if we then open up the this element here and then we tell it that the dependency field is the dependency field there, you can now actually see these particular dependencies as well, which is super useful. And then in this view, this also allows you to manage uh, the length of time. So if you know Sprint 1 is going to take longer, we can actually now elongate that. We can push this on. Um, you can change the sorts of views you have, like any sort of Gantt chart. Um, uh, maybe I'll move this over here. Uh, maybe there might be a bit of a holiday break, etc., and that might be extended. So this is giving you those sorts of uh, control. Now, if you want as well, you can colorize your project records, uh, which also then means that these will actually come up as different colors. Um, or you can filter as well down to just the particular project that you want to show. So this is um, really useful for either producing a report for your client or as a project manager, seeing where you are with the overall project. So this is uh, still quite some basic information and you could actually stop here if you wanted to. If you've got other tools that you're using internally and you're just using this to showcase the overall project progress, this could be absolutely fine. But you can now uh, dive deeper into this and actually add tasks to these deliverables. So let's add in some tasks. Uh, we're going to link this up to the deliverable so we understand where we are in the overall cycle. And then let's actually link this to the web build project sprint one. And let's just do this. Let's also link one up to sprint two so that we can see that. Um, we'll move attachments over here because that's actually going to be useful as is notes. We want to group this by deliverable as well so that we can see what's going on. So that's our collaborator. We want to notify them when they are assigned a task. Uh, we want to tell them when it is due. Uh, so let's uh, do a date. You could even do a date time as well if you wanted to, if it was uh, due for a particular time, etc. as well. So uh, let's go ahead and give me a whole load of tasks that will be towards this uh, project. Let's uh, put this date in here as well. Now we also want uh, to know what the status is. Uh, the easiest way is to do a checkbox, although you can do a status of complete, etc., which is a drop-down status. Um, I'm just going to change this to complete and just use a checkbox. Uh, so that's my little checkbox. Is it complete? And I can put that over here or wherever I want. Uh, let's give these some names. And again, through the magic of editing, there it all is. And I can also then add some sort of colorization so that I can see or highlight rows that are complete, etc. It gives me a little bit more of a view. So let's uh, let's do that. And let's give this a color. And we're going to say where complete is selected. And it gives us that colorization there. We can see what's going on and where we're at. Now, another cool thing we can do as well is because these are all grouped up against the deliverable, we can actually do a roll-up and calculate where we're at. So let's let's do that. So to do that, we can create a roll-up. Um, so let's open this and create a new field, and we're going to find a roll-up field here. And we're going to call this completion. Uh, then what we're going to do is relate this tasks field and find the complete checkbox. 
And then we're going to add in this sum. So that what we're doing is we're grabbing the sum of the values. So that's because this is a checkbox, it's a, a one or a zero. So we can sum all those together. And then we're also using the count all values. So we're actually classing each and every single record as a one. So all related records to this particular element here. So if I now press uh, save, that's going to give us pretty much zero. But if we check the formatting, so if I go over here and change this to a percentage, we can now see that this sprint on the web project is 33% complete. So if I go ahead and mark one of these as complete as well, and then switch back over to the deliverable, you can see that we are moving along our completion status as well. Uh, these at the moment have nothing in them because we've got no related records, but that would be a way of showing yourself where you are. And you could then use this again to report to clients or send particular views. Now let's create a view here that uh, for just one particular project and then you could send this as a report to your client. Um, so let's do the web build project. So we're going to duplicate this view to web build project. And then we're going to filter this out so that the project is only um, the web build project. This gives us a, a report, therefore, that we could, in theory, send quite quickly and just create a shareable link and this link here would go out to our client and they would be able to see the overall status. So they can see here is the web build project, the sprint, um, the dependency, start and end date, and the relevant tasks uh, that are associated here as well. So you can take this as far as you need to. You can create all sorts of different views as well, which will help you manage the project. So for example, you can create calendar views so you can see uh, when things are starting and when they're ending as opposed to uh, Gantt charts. And you can also create uh, these Kanban views as well, where if, you're, if you've got statuses, etc., you can actually move things across or use, say, the owner field. So say, for example, you could use the owner field here and then move particular tasks between um, your owners, that's your collaborators. So there's all sorts of different things you could do with this. So my recommendation would be for you to watch this video, follow it and build something that's going to match your processes. Normally I would just release this and let people clone it, but every business is different. How you manage your projects is going to be different as well. So I recommend use the theory that I've put in here and see if you can develop something that will flow with the way that your team um, flows and the way that your team works. Create the Gantt charts that you need to show your clients the information that they need, etc. And you don't have to therefore get bogged down with big complicated project management systems. There's all sorts you can do. We'll be looking at this as well in the future. Don't forget on this video, please do like and subscribe. If you're not listening to the podcast, please do so as well. Check that out on agencytrailblazer.com. Thanks for watching. You're awesome and have a wonderful day.